welcome back to third rate content today we're going to be doing a bit of a documentary a docu vlog we usually do those but it's going to be more of a documentary because recently or in the last year it came into some uh, ancestry world war one ancestry records um and i've been meaning to do a video about them for ages well about a year and a half since i got them but i haven't got round to it but today winter's approaching well at the moment winter's approaching and i thought why not get into some real wintry documentaries or a documentary or maybe two i don't know but today will be world war one ancestry medals valor tragedy death life we'll be going from here the start of today's journey cop what the former copthorne barracks and we'll be heading to goulburn in south lancashire finding out about the um, mining there and we'll be finding out about a particular individual my great uncle and to some extent my great grandfather um richard uh Pownall and his brother who both volunteered to fight in world war one and um, they gave up their reserved status occupations as coal miners colliers to go and fight um the germans and the axis powers in world war one and it led to a heck of a journey from like i said from shrewsbury to goulburn to salonica former thessaly the birthplace of alexander the great and one of the most crucial battles in world war one that actually started the dominoes falling for the end of that terrible terrible conflict so anyway buckle up and i'll see you out here and yeah, we'll just sort of st quickly start at the end with this document from the South Lancashire Regiment uh, Corps about the decorations earned. And as you can see here, Private Richard Pownall, I think it's taken from their ranks at the start of the conflict. And as you can see, he is discharged uh, as of the th March 29th. Uh, 1919 and this poor chap john henry greenfield died of a kick effects of kicked by a horse and it was signed for in shrewsbury at the barracks which was a depot at that time for district number four and it was signed by lieutenant caulfield second lieutenant so there you go on with the film on the 28th of june 1914 a Bosnian Serb named Gavrilo Printclip assassinated Archduke Franz Ferdinand. And this was the beginning of the worldwide conflict known as World War I. It is estimated that the First World War cost 9 million soldiers dead on both sides and 23 million wounded, plus another 5 million civilian deaths from various causes. At this time, my great uncle, Richard Pownall, was a collier at Goulburn Col Colliery, where he was a charge hand. Conditions down the pit at this time were horrendous. There was, there was no showers for the men when they finished their shifts, so they had to go home covered in filth. Conditions were dangerous, as you can imagine, and there was none of the heavy technology and drills that made later miners lives so much easier although still hard in both world wars coal mining was a reserved occupation meaning it was not required to enlist in the military but nevertheless richard pownall and his brother paul pownall enrolled in the in the army in september 1914 at the earliest possible opportunity both men became machine gunners Paul in the Lancashire Pals and Richard Pownall in the South Lancashire Regiment. Richard was posted to France just after Christmas in 1914, although he had to be sent home in March 1915 due to frostbitten feet with many other of his comrades. 
They were not equipped properly for the cold winter in France, though on recovery. Pownall was posted with the South Lancashire Regiment to Salonika, a world away from Goulburn and England. The Salonika Front, also known as the Macedonian Front, was a theatre of war, World War I and formed as a result by the Allied powers to aid Serbia in the autumn of 1915. Although being unlike the Western Front, Salonika had its own challenges, e.g. malaria, hot weather, cold weather, and the digging in could be very hard due to the arid conditions. And sometimes they used to find relics of soldiers from the eons that preceded them. From the days of Alexander the Great himself, there was even an archaeological project carried out during the war and thousands of relics were recovered. Another major drawback to serving on the Salonika front for troops was the basic non-existence of home leave. With the only routes back to Blighty being either via the Mediterranean, which was infested with German U-boats, or overland, which was impossible due to the war, the troops serving would have had more chance of home leave being on the moon, quite honestly. After three years of checked advances and failed attempts at breaking the line of the Bulgarians and Germans, the Battle of the Dory III commenced on the 18th of September 1918. The British hoped to capture the Bulgarian positions in the hills above the Dorian Lake, also known as Pipridge, the fearsomely defended fortress with all the approaches surveyed by Bulgarian artillery specialists. In the ensuing three years, Richard Paynell had gone from a private to a sergeant as a machine gunner for the South Lancashire Regiment. During the build-up to the attack, the British concentrated 231 pieces of artillery on Pit Ridge. Though much like the Western Front, this did little to hinder the defenders. The British 66th Brigade's 12th Cheshire Regiment, followed by the 9th South Lancashire Regiment and the 8th King Shropshire Light Infantry advanced into Bulgarian artillery and machine gun fire. The 66th Brigade lost 65% of its soldiers. The South Lancs and KLSI's losses were no better. And it was during the assault on Pipridge that Sergeant Pownall was cited for a distinguished conduct medal. The citation reads, during the attack on the P Ridge on September the 18th, 1918, this non-commissioned officer showed conspicuous gallantry and devotion to duty. When the advance was checked, owing to heavy artillery, machine gun and rifle fire, he again rallied the men of his company and continued to lead them forward until practically all had become casualties. He did splendid work. So during the attack, what had happened is Sergeant Pannell's company had sustained heavy casualties. Their officer had been killed and it was left to him to lead the men. Um, obviously, it was a very, very terrifying experience and the remaining survivors probably didn't want to go forward and I can't say I blame them seeing what had happened to their comrades but Sergeant Pannell had the presence of mind to know that the Bulgarians and Germans had surveyed the approaches to Pit Ridge and the longer you stayed in one location the more likely you were to be spotted and artillery rain down on you and be killed. So the only way forward was was to go forward and attack. And this unfortunately cost the lives of virtually all in the attack. 
The only survivors would have been Sergeant Pownall and a French officer. Who Sergeant Pownall is credited with saving, hence him receiving the Code de Guerre with palms. As it was the French, British and Greeks who were attacking Pip Ridge on September the 18th. The battle ended on the 19th of September with the Bulgarians still in place as they had been through the preceding three years. But the day after, the Bulgarians and their allies had vanished. They believed that they were going to be attacked from behind by the Serbians and abandon their positions, thus ending the Salonika campaign. This was the first domino to fall in the end of World War I. Within weeks, the war was over and all the soldiers who survived went home to their families and occupations back in Blighty, including Sergeant Pownall, who went back home to Goulburn and his job down the pit at Goulburn Colliery. And this is the site of the, the former Goulburn Colliery. A year and a half after the war, Goulburn Council recognised Sergeant Pownall, as was, but now regular Richard, Mr. Richard Pownall, with a, an award for his bravery and a civic recognition. But 12 years later, Richard Pownall and his brother Paul had to identify their father after the Edge Green number nine pit disaster. Their father, John Pownall, could only be recognised by his wedding ring, even though the pit disaster records show that the coal board said he died a winner with no serious burns. My family tell a different story and I think pit records were not 100% accurate and they favoured the coal board. And my great-grandfather himself, Paul Pownall, who had served on the Somme in France during World War, World War I, died at the age of 52. And even though he died of respiratory disease, the coal board ruled that he did not die of injuries or a condition sustained down the pit. And subsequently, my great-grandmother, Alice Pownall, formerly Alice Beddoes, did not receive her, her free coal. And she must have thought about her, her husband every time she bought a bag of coal. And she also bemoaned that her neighbour, her neighbour's husband had died down the pit and she, her neighbour got the free coal and he had never served in World War One. He remained working down the pit. A smaller, slow drip tragedy, or you could say a slow burn daily tragedy. But Richard Pownall himself lived into a ripe old age, into his 80s. And my dad actually reckon, re remembers seeing it, Richard, in the Horns Inn, which is no longer in Goulburn, it shut quite some time ago, and saying all right to him. And he used to turn out, like, my, like I said, right up until his 80s. So he had a good life. And this was his house, number 46, Church Street, Goulburn. And slightly going off the subject, the Church Street chip shop is excellent. I did have some chips while I was filming. But there's the Pinell family home. And I just want to say a big thank you to Pauline Joyce Lee for helping me with some questions and some information when making this video and to John Bagley who provided 
the certificate from uh, Goulburn Council, or as it was known at that time, the Urban District of Goulburn. That one in the end, uh, yeah. that was where he, I used to come and when he was when, when I was really with me down And this is the retirement bungalow that Richard Pownall would have lived in. Obviously when he packed in working down the pit. So thank you for watching to the end of today's third rate content docu vlog. My personal family history, ancestry, World War One ancestry. It's been a heck of a journey. We've been all over and we find out some really interesting things. And I have got nothing but thanks for my great uncle and great grandfather who uh, who basically gave up their lives at that time put them on hold for four years to go and fight um, for their country and and they they both survived as we said and if they hadn't survived there's a good chance this video wouldn't be being made today um, because my grandmother mary had severe tb in her youth and it was the contacts the military contacts that my uh, great grandfather and great uncle had after they had left the army after world war one that allowed her to sit, receive treatment for the tb and she probably wouldn't have made it if it wasn't for that um, so they both went to fight if they hadn't survived there's a good chance my nan would have passed away of tb and i wouldn't be here now presenting third there'll be no third rate content and i wouldn't be standing here today um, presenting this docuvlog but thank you for listening to the end and if you did enjoy please feel free to leave a like subscribe uh, and and if you've got anything to add any comments i would love that and i love a good comment and i reply where appropriate and applicable so uh thank you and um let's get on with winter and hopefully We'll be getting out again very soon into the fields and investigating some more ancient sites. So uh, thank you. A third rate content, sign out. Bye bye.